So moving on, that's Rich, his smiling mug, co-CEO of our company. He's going to talk about the Focus Investor. He's got 90 minutes. So he is, like I just said, co-founder, co-CEO of Real Wealth Network, licensed real estate investor and an active, licensed real estate broker and an active investor, master certified business coach, published a book called Extreme Success that I've actually got a signed copy on my bookshelf at home. Um, and he's a, what does it say, happy hubby and papa, which is nice, as evidenced by his radiant smile. So let's give a nice round of applause for Rich. Come on up here, Rich. Good morning, everybody. All right, man, 13th year of Focused Investor. That kind of blows my mind, really blows my mind, really cool. You know, um, the stuff I'm going to be sharing today, I'm, as Ben said, I'm, I get a little obsessed with it. It was about 30 years ago, a little bit more, that my uncle bought me a little audio cassette called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, Gerber, and I listened to it over and over and over, and then I started to listen to Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, and I got on this path of personal development, personal growth, and it's been transformational for me. And then I went into becoming a business coach and a life coach, and so working with my clients and seeing Wow, what works over here for this person also worked over here for this person. So what I'm sharing with you today are what I see as the best of the best. The stuff that really works. These are timeless principles, so it doesn't matter if you're a real estate investor or a stay-at-home mom or a business owner, whatever it might be, these same principles apply to all of us. Some of the things I'm gonna be sharing too are also strategies. They're tools or ideas that work for some people and they don't work for some people, so you'll have to sort through that. But when we get to the principal parts, I'll definitely, I'll definitely hit on that. And so this is what it comes back to. Yeah, 13th year. It seems like, well, if you've been here, you've been here 13 years doing this. But Zig said, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. So <laughs> I love that. It's like, thank you, Zig. Super cool. And it's... We need this constant inspiration. We have what we have built into our minds as human beings is called a negativity bias. We look for problems. And it served us over the 50,000 years that we've been evolving as humans because back then, you had to watch out for the saber-toothed tiger who's going to try to kill you or someone from another tribe who's going to try to attack you. Someone's going to steal your food. You're always looking for problems. But here we are in 2019, we don't have those same problems. We have problems, but things that are not going to usually kill us and be that dangerous. So sometimes we have to shift from a negativity bias of looking for everything that's wrong and looking for problems to kind of taking that bath and moving into what's working, what's good, how can I improve, where do I want to go, who do I want to be. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to hit on a lot of that stuff. You know, this, with a negativity bias, there's this looking ahead piece and the reason we want to look ahead is it's all about not just becoming a focused investor. Absolutely, the tools that we're going to talk about today and learn is all going to, it's going to help you be a more focused investor, doing the right thing. Kathy and I, 13 years with Real Wealth Network, with 42,000 members, we've met a lot of investors. And we've seen it's the, the most successful investors are the ones who are focused on what matters most, what they're doing on a consistent basis, and what they want. So looking forward with that, we get to look at that, turn it around, and become the best versions of ourselves. That's what this is really about, becoming the best version of yourself in 2019 and 2020, moving forward way into the future, which we'll hit on as well. All right, so here's my goal for today, to help you gain clarity and create a clear, simple plan that you implement for more joy, fulfillment, and real wealth in 2019 and beyond. So the bottom line of this is about fulfillment and happiness. When we're moving to what we want, when we're becoming a better version of ourselves, it's timeless wisdom, that is a principle. As we get better, everything around us gets better. That is a timeless principle. The Greeks call it, uh, from telos in Greek, is uh, a target. We're teleological beings. We do better when we have a goal out there that we're moving toward. So we'll talk about that. Because this is what we don't want. I don't want this to be you. You know, we want to have our head in the right place. We want to you know, keep it out, looking around and looking at where we want to go. So let's make sure that we do that today. So here's the process we'll be looking at today. This is kind of the coaching process. It's just the overall how we self-coach. It's how we get coached. Uh, we coach as, uh, as a business coach or a personal coach. It starts with envisioning. And that's going to be a big focus of the start today. Envisioning. Where do you want to go? What do you want? 
Then you move into the strategizing piece. Okay, take that idea and the vision. How do I turn it into an action plan and a game plan? And then it moves into implementation, implementing, putting that into action. That's up to you. Taking those day by day, week by week, month by month actions that are going to move you ahead. And then you go back and then you go into observing, looking at what worked, what didn't work, what did I learn from that, what did I learn from the lesson, the failure, the win. We do this with Real Wealth Network every year. We've been doing it ever since the beginning. We get everyone together, our whole team, and right now it's 22 people on our team, and we get together and we look at our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, our threats. We look at how can we improve, how can we create a better uh, environment for you guys as members. So you can see up on the wall behind me there all those notes. That's what we come away with. Dozens and dozens of notes and ideas and thoughts that has created what Real Wealth Network is today. We do the same thing with our affiliates, our property teams around the country. We get together twice a year. We got one coming up next month in Tampa. And we get all the affiliates together and we talk about exactly that. What's working for you? How can you be better? How can you better serve Real Wealth Network members? How can you improve property management? So the same process that you're about to do, that we're about to do, we do as a business and we do with our, uh, our partners. I love what Albert says here. The important thing is to never stop questioning. So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. You're going to be doing some writing today, some journaling. You're going to walk out of here, like I said, with an action plan that you can implement for this year and beyond. And I see you as the expert. I'm not going to get up here and say, this is how you should do your real estate investing. This is what you should do, or this is what you want, or this is the way to do it. My goal, I see my role up here, is to ask the right questions that are help, help draw that expertise out of you. So hopefully I can do that today. So did you do a year-end completion? Anyone do the uh, webinar that uh, wrapping up 2018? Any show of hands? OK, about, maybe about 20, 15, 20% of the room. All right, so I always think it's a good idea, I know it's a good idea, to kind of bookend your years, to stop and say, what was that year about? How did I grow? How did I learn? I did this with my coaching clients for years, as a business coach for 20 years. Uh, went through the same process. So if you go to, uh, here's the benefits of it. It helps you pause and reflect, stop and look at, wow, instead of just year after year after year going over and over, you stop for a moment, breathe, slow down and say, what was this year about for me? What was this year about for me? It also improves our gratefulness and our awareness. We become more aware of the good stuff in our life, counting our wins and looking at what's working. And it taps in and gets us to start releasing dopamine which is that neurotransmitter in our brain that makes us feel happy. So when you stop back and you look at and you do some gratefulness, you're going to feel happier. It's scientifically proven. And finally, you become you learn how to become a better version of yourself, which we're looking at today. How can you carry what happened in 2018 into 2019 to keep getting better little by little, bit by bit. When we get better, everything around us gets better. So here's where it is. It's, uh, it's on the website. It's free, realwealthnetwork.com. So you could go there later if you want to wrap up your 2018. It's, like, it's a 45-minute uh, webinar, and I take you through a process of looking at your 2018, asking some of those powerful questions to help draw out what the year was for you. All right, so let's move into envisioning that first part on that circle of this process, looking at where you want to go, envisioning and tapping into that. It's about looking forward. We're going to look way into the future today, looking to the future for our next steps today. What do we do this month? What do we do next month? We're going to go through that process. On your uh, handout right there at the top, it says a blank is, a simply, is simply a very clear picture of what you want. A little typo here. A vision is simply a very clear picture of what you see for yourself in the future if everything turns out just right if everything turns out just right. And you hear inspirational speakers get up, they have to, have to have a vision, go for it, you gotta go for it, you gotta, you gotta see that vision, that's most important. And it's like, yeah, that's really great advice, but how do we do that? How do we get that clear vision? How do we see where we wanna go? My favorite way to do it, I call future focus. When I was in my 20s, and er, my early 20s when I was in college, I was in a class called Statistics for Business. It was a very boring class, but I used to take one of those little micro cassette recorders, remember those little things? And I used to bring it to class, record it, because I couldn't pay attention in class, and then when I got home, I would play it back and take notes. Well, I was studying one night, and instead of studying, I grabbed that little cassette recorder, flipped the tape over, 
And I just had this idea, and I said, a day in the life of Rich Fetke. And I went into this future vision of where I wanted to be in the future. And it was super inspiring. I still have that little, that little tiny micro cassette. I just don't have anything I can play it on anymore. <laughs> but it's, um, it was the start of that process for me about looking forward. And I'm sure all of you have done something like this. Then, in 1996, I enrolled in the Coaches Training Institute out in San Rafael to learn how to become a certified coach. And in that, they took us through a process called Future Self. And it was a very, very similar process. And it was so enlightening. And that was over 20 years ago. And I am so stoked because that guy that I met in the future, 20 years in the future back then, is me today. He has that amazing relationship, is abundance, has amazing kids. So I love this process. It's worked great for me. And I've done it with hundreds of clients over the years. So now I get to share it with you. So I'm going to go back one here. So this is going to be a little bit of that San Francisco Bay Area woo-woo. We get to bring it back into the room. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to put down your pens uh, and get in a comfortable position. If you meditate or visualize or do anything like that, go ahead and get into that position. That's good for you. If you don't, I would recommend feet flat on the floor, sitting up straight, hands in your lap, however you want to do it. I'm going to take you through a short visualization here where you just get to tap into your imagination. I'm going to be asking you some questions as we go through this. As I ask you the questions, just answer them inside your own mind. You don't have to speak it out loud. And if there are any sounds that come up, whatever people come in the room, you hear a door open and close, just allow it. Just let it to come in and pass through and just be in the moment. I would highly recommend that you do this closed eyes. If it's uncomfortable for you to do that, awesome. I love getting on, out on the other side of the comfort zone is more growth and more courage. So go for it. So go ahead, close your eyes, and just begin to bring your awareness to your body. Noticing your body, feeling your feet, feeling the chair beneath you, and being, start to bring your awareness to your breath. Breathing in deeply, holding it for a moment, and letting it go. Allow your breathing to become more natural, more comfortable, and notice how good it feels to slow down and just be peaceful. Feeling a calming confidence flow over your body. I'm going to ask you to imagine the spot between your eyes, your third eye, and imagine there's a light there. There's a light between your eyes. Notice the color of this light, and imagine that light becomes a beam extending from your forehead out into space. And follow that beam of light, noticing the color of it, following that beam of light up out of the room moving further towards space through the clouds, moving further and further out as the ball of blue and green below you gets smaller and smaller with white clouds wisping around it, following that beam further and further out into space, noticing the darkness and the stillness and the calmness of space, moving further and further out into space. And as you look up ahead, imagine another beam of light a different color from the one that you followed out into space. Notice that beam of light and notice that it intersects with the beam of light that you've been following. Move your way toward that other beam of light and begin to follow that beam of light back toward Earth. Moving down through space, down that beam of light toward Earth, getting closer toward Earth and realizing that you're moving toward Earth 10 years in your future. You're about to have the opportunity to visit your life 10 years in the future. Continue to follow the beam down, noticing the Earth, noticing where your beam of light is landing on this planet, following that beam of light down and eventually landing down on Earth, realizing that you are now 10 years in the future. And imagine you look up and you see a dwelling 
This is the home of your future self. This is where you live 10 years in the future. Notice what this place looks like. Notice if there are trees or flowers. Get a sense of the type of person and the type of people who live here. Notice what this home looks like and move toward the door. And now do what you need to do to get someone to come to the door, realizing that on the other side of this door is your future self. It's you 10 years in the future. As the door opens, notice this person, your future self. This is you 10 years in the future. Notice the way your future self welcomes you in and greets you. Look at this person, your future self. Get a sense of their energy, their vitality, their wisdom. Notice what your future self is wearing. Look into their eyes, deep into their eyes. Get a sense of who this person is. And your future self invites you to come inside for a comfortable conversation. As you make your way into this home, look around. Notice if they're photographs, photographs of the people you love, photographs of life events. As you sit down for a comfortable conversation with your future self, maybe your future self offers you something to eat or drink. And there's some questions that you would like to ask your future self. Begin by asking this question. Future self, in the last 10 years, what stands out most in your memory? In the last 10 years, what stands out most in your memory? And listen to what your future self has to tell you. And now, ask your future self, what do I need to do to get from where I am to where you are? What would be helpful for me to know to get from where I am to where you are? And listen to what your future self has to tell you. There are other questions you would like to ask your future self, so take some time now to ask any other questions you might have. And now, it's time to go, but you realize you can come back to this place anytime you want. Your future self is always there as your wise mentor, as your guide. You make your way back to the door of this home with your future self. And before you go, turn around and look again into your future self's eyes. Look at this person and imagine moving toward them getting closer and closer, and actually merging into their body, moving inside the body of your future self. And now, imagine yourself looking out through your future self's eyes. Feel what it feels like to be this person, your future self. And as you look out through your future self's eyes, look at your present day self. And notice what you see. And if there was one piece of advice that you would like to share with your present day self, what would that be? Go ahead and say goodbye to your future self for now and notice the way your future self returns your farewell. Make your way back through that door walking away from the home, looking up ahead and seeing that beam of light that brought you into this future. Follow that beam of light back up into space, moving further and further out away from Earth 
through the clouds into the deepness and darkness and stillness of space, looking up ahead and again seeing that other beam of light that you took you to space originally. Intersecting with the beam of light that you're on, follow that beam of light back toward Earth, toward present day Earth. Moving down this beam of light, getting closer and closer to the Earth. Seeing North America, seeing California, seeing the Bay Area, moving your way down and coming into the room, becoming more aware of your breathing, becoming more aware of your body, moving things around a little bit, maybe moving your head from side to side. And when you're ready, go ahead and open up your eyes. All right, thank you for going there with me. <laughs> All right, so I uh, don't want to get too groggy, so I need you to stand up real quick and I get to shake it up a little bit here. We'll see who's sleeping, <laughs> which I have had when I've spoken before. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's stretch it this way. Stretch it this way. Wake it up, maybe shake it up a little bit. All right, good. Fix your underwear, sit back down. Here we go. Pretty cool, huh? I love that. I love future self. I love future focus. I go there consistently to go back and check in. I have my future self on my board of advisors. So I have a bunch of people on my internal metal and mental board of advisors. I, got, I have Jesus and Buddha and I have business leaders. And I also have my future self. Sometimes I'll be like, what would my future self do? And it works really well. So, I want you to remember what you saw. If you didn't see it really clear, some people are super clear and they're very, very right brained and they can do this and they're creative and they can see things. Some people are more left brain, not so much, more analytical. If it didn't work for you, great. It's, it's totally fine. You can go back and do it again and keep practicing. You have to wake up that side of the brain. We can do it, you can do it through an exercise before you do this. Like right now, um, think about a purple elephant and that purple elephant just turned into a chair. And that chair just broke apart into a thousand pieces. And now they just reassemble and they turn into a little statue. Boom. You just started war warming up that part of your right brain that's creative and visual. Works really cool. And we tap into something else in our brain I want to go, on, go over in a second. But let's take a look at what you saw. The first question, or well, the first thing you saw, hopefully, was your future self's home. So write down what you saw there on this sheet the home is. The home is. What did you see when you came down and landed? Where was the home? Where was this dwelling? What did it look like? Whatever you saw. I'll give you a minute to work on that. The next question that you asked your future self, or the first question you asked, was future self, in the last 10 years, what stands out most in your memory? Write down what your future self had to tell you. In the last 10 years, what stood out most in your future self's memory. And if something didn't come up for you, take a guess right now and just write it down. What do you think they would say? And if you're done with that, the next question was, what do I need to do to get from where I am to where you are? What would be helpful for me to know to get to where you are? And write down what your future self had to tell you. And then you asked your own questions. Whatever you came up with, whatever you were curious about, so what else did you ask, and what were the answers? Any advice that you got? Any new ideas? Any like, whoo, I didn't think about that one. All right, so that was taking it out 10 years into the future. You can do this 20 years into the future, 30 years into the future, two years into the future, whatever works for you. What I want you to do now is pull it back a little bit. We're going to talk about why go out further and how to pull it back and what it does in our brains and what it does for us. But I want you to answer this question. Think about this. If you were attending this workshop three years from today, three years from today, what has to have happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel happy with your progress, your progress in life, your progress as a focused investor? your progress creating real wealth. And that's on the next page. If you're attending the Focused Investor Workshop three years from today, what has to have happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel happy with your progress? 
All right, I wish we could do this in a full day workshop because all these questions I know could take, you could spend an hour on each of these answers. Uh, but you can always come back, you've got this form, and flesh it out even more, add some more things. The more you give thought to this, the better chances of success, fulfillment, happiness, and all just from doing this work up front. So coming off of that one, what you just looked at, what you just wrote, Take it down a notch here, the next, next step. Specifically, what challenges do you have right now that need to be eliminated? What opportunities need to be captured? And what strengths need to be maximized? So these two questions, it's called the Dan Sullivan question, or the R factor question. Dan Sullivan founded the Strategic Coach Program back in 1973, I think. He's coached thousands of entrepreneurs all over the world and learned, is learned as a coach what works for some people, what doesn't work, what helps overall. And this is a really powerful question I, I gained from Dan that I think is really cool. So anyway, write down what challenges do you need to eliminate? What opportunities do you have here to move toward that three-year intention? What opportunities and what, what are your strengths? What strengths do you have either built into you and also around you, the people, opportunities. So what are the strengths that you have as well? Okay, again, remember you can come back to this. I would highly encourage you to come back to this, give it some more thought, get some more things down. But you can carry all this with you forward, all the way from 10 years out with your future self pulling back to what's important to you. And looking back on your future self's home, make a little note there, flip back one page and it says, my future self's home is dot, dot, dot. Cross out my future self's home and write, I am. I am. Just to notice there's something that goes on in our subconscious often looking at that, that home. It's a representative of who we are, who we see ourselves becoming. So is it open and transparent? Is it solid and grounded? Is it beautiful and pretty? <laughs> Whatever it might be, sometimes looking down, it just can be like, ooh, that's interesting. Whatever it means. Cool. So now, pulling it back from 10 years to three to one, what about this year? What about 2019? Here we are, just a couple weeks into the year. What do you envision for 2019? Just what your gut tell you. Go ahead and jot that down. Um, let's see, I guess I don't have a space for it right there, except that the last page, there's uh, notes and stuff to, the rem to remember, if you wanted to put it under there. But just think about that vision for 2019, but we're gonna get more clarity on that, setting your big three for 2019 and some of that stuff. But just what do you envision? What comes up first after doing some of this mental work, this mental journey? And as you ponder that, and I said earlier, this is gonna help you release more dopamine, feel happier, feel more fulfilled, get more out of life. Dr. Tal Ben-Shahar is a professor at Harvard University who still holds the record for the most attended class in all of Harvard University's history, and it's on happiness. How cool is that? On happiness, so Dr. Shahar and his students are constantly studying what has people be happy, more fulfilled. And this is the bottom line of his research. Great book, by the way, Happier. You might want to grab that one. He says, to be happy, we need to identify and pursue goals that are both pleasurable and meaningful. And I love his metaphor for this. He talks about a mountain, a mountain peak, and not just having the goal be the top of the mountain. Like, I want to get to the top of the mountain. Once I get to the top of the mountain, then I'll be happy. You can't just do that, because then it's not gonna be fulfillment. What if you don't get to the top of the mountain? But he also says, not having a goal and just meandering around the mountain also is not going to bring us happiness. You need to have this goal that's meaningful, but also pleasurable on, find pleasure on the way there, on the journey, having it be fun. We hear it, you know, and life's a journey and all that stuff, but here's scientific research done at Harvard University that, like I said earlier, we're teleological beings. When we're getting better, we're more fulfilled and it triggers something inside us to make us feel better. So that's what we're doing here. 
So that was the envisioning piece, looking at where do you want to go, looking out, kind of pushing that the gremlin, that inner voice that's in our heads that, that sucks sometimes, that tells us we're not enough, we can't do it, your friend failed, you know, everything. We, I mean, we all have it. Every single person has this itty bitty shitty committee built into our head, <laughs> right? I've coached a lot of clients and every one from the most powerful, most successful people in the world, they still have a gremlin. The best thing we can do with this gremlin is just simply notice it and be like, well, oh, okay, shine the light on it and the gremlin loses power in light. It's like, oh crap, I'm, I'm found out, you know, I'm caught out. So this is a way for us to combat the gremlin and I think your future self is the most powerful anti-gremlin person out there. So it comes up, it shows you what you can do and what you're about. So now we're moving from the envisioning piece into the strategizing piece. How do we go from the idea, the vision, the ideas, and all that, moving it into a strategy that we can implement? So let's start with balancing. Doesn't that look fun? <laughs> so this guy is balancing, and he's not static. He's constantly moving. Little corrections, sometimes big corrections. Moving himself, and that's the way life is for us. Balance is constant movement, right? So here's a tool that I learned from, uh, from coaching. It's called the Life Balance Wheel, and it allows us to take a snapshot of where we are in our lives. How do we feel about our balance, the way things are going? So go ahead and flip the page, and you'll see a Life Balance Wheel right there. And the way this tool works is it's you taking a snapshot of your life, these 10 major areas of your life, right now. How satisfied are you? I don't care what society says, what your friends say, what your family says, how satisfied are you? So in each wedge of that wheel, write down a number. So you wanna take a look at that. So go ahead and look down and see whatever wedge pizza slice jumps out to you and give it a rating. So let's say it's finance, finances. So maybe if you're really satisfied, it's an eight or a nine or even a 10, that's extreme success or maybe it really sucks and it's a zero or a one, that's gonna be way down the middle. So just write whatever that first slice you saw, write a number in there, how satisfied are you with that area of your life right now? And then move to the next one. And say it was a five, right in the middle, make a new edge, draw a line right there at five. If it were an eight, you'd go out further toward that outer edge and you draw a new line for an eight. Because right now it's a 10 circle all the way around. Does that makes sense? So go ahead and give you, a, give you a minute or two here to fill out your life balance wheel based on how satisfied are you in each of those areas of your life. And I'll add, you might be satisfied with something like, say you're not in a relationship, but you still might score that a nine. You'd be totally fine with that. Or maybe you're in a relationship and you might score it a two. <laughs> That's the way it is too, right? So whatever it is for you, go ahead. So as you continue with your life balance wheel, I just wanna share some of the value of this tool. One, it allows you to take a look and say, whoa, okay, if this were an actual wheel with that outer line, how bumpy would that ride be if it was an actual wheel? Some of us, it'd be like going along, boom, you know? Sometimes it's going along pretty nice. Sometimes it's a little tiny wheel. Sometimes it's this big wheel. But just look at it for you. Simply notice. Simply notice how bumpy would the ride be. And what I love about this tool and when I worked with clients on this is you can take a look at something and say, wow, finances is, I rated it a five. Then you get to go, okay, what if it were a seven or an eight? That's what I ask, I'd ask my clients in the past. If we're an eight, what would be different? What has to have changed by the end of this year or two years for that to be an eight or a nine? And all of a sudden you start getting these awarenesses and you can sometimes look at what you don't like, flip it over and see what you do want on the other side. And I think these are the 10 major areas of your life. If there's something else you think of, go ahead and add it on there. So now let's go into the theme. When you attend the, when you all go back and watch the, uh, year completion webinar, which I'm sure you will do, you'll see there's a part in there where I asked, what was the theme of last year? What was the theme of your 2018? A way to like put a flag in the ground, say this is what this flag, this uh, year was about for me. So what about 2019? What do you want the theme to be 
for you this year? Another way to look at this, if, if, it were, if they were going to make a movie about your life, or you're writing a movie, say, I'm going to write a movie for my life for the year 2019, this is the way it's going to play out, what would the title be? What would the title be for your life in 2019? Go ahead and write that down. I've heard the breakthrough, I've heard rising from the ashes, should be good for us in Malibu. <laughs> I've heard um, abundance. Whatever it is for you, in this book, one word that will change your life, the authors say, a theme creates simplicity, clarity, and life change. It transforms not only what you do, but who you become. So having that theme for the year and coming back to it and having top of mind is gonna help us be on track and be more focused throughout the year. So you've got your theme, I hope. If not, you can always add it later. And coming back to you, again, we wanna be more focused investors, which means being a better version of ourselves. When we're a better version of ourselves, we're more focused, we're more intelligent, we're more experienced, more grounded. So that means developing our personal qualities. But what is the one most important personal quality that you want to develop this year? What is most important to you that you want to develop? And I've got some examples there. Maybe it's courage. Maybe this year you're going to really work on your authenticity, just being you, being authentically you. Maybe it's integrity. One year I took on that challenge of Everything I do and say, 100% integrity, and it was harder than I thought it was going to be. But I did it, and it changed my life for the better forever. Kindness, boldness, self-discipline, grace under pressure, humor. So what is it for you that you're going to focus on this year? That one thing that you're going to remind yourself on a regular basis, which we'll talk about in a little bit, how to do that. But what is it that you're going to work on this year? So that's your personal quality. And finally, in the strategizing piece, moving forward step by step, creating an action plan, let's talk about the rule of three. The rule of three, and this is what are your big three for 2019? The big three. Why? Sorry about these freaky hands. I had 100 pull ups yesterday. <laughs> um, the, the rule of three is where we set three major intentions for the year. Three major intentions. Uh, Kathy and I met uh, almost 24 years ago now in a personal development workshop where they had to set three goals. Personal, two personal, and one professional, or um, two professional, one personal, however we wanted to mix it up. But you want a balance of those. And obviously, Kathy was one of my goals, so that worked. <laughs> Became one. The reason we only three is I don't care if you have 100 goals. That's totally cool. It's great. Just get it out of your head and onto paper. Put it somewhere where you can know that it's, it's held in a place where you can check it out anytime. The big three are the big three that if I woke you up in the middle of the night and said, hey, wake up, wake up. What are your big three goals for this year? You could be like, whoa, oh, this, this, this. Super sharp. Why? Because what we're doing is we're ta tapping into the reticular activating system. If you look right down on here, you'll see uh, the bottom one under fun facts on page two. There's three blanks. The reticular activating system, our RAS. They discovered this in 1957. They found that there was reticulation happening at the base of our brain, right in our brain stem, and it's like our supercomputer and it's our filtering system. It's our filtering system for seeing what we want, and you just did it by doing future focus and meeting your future self. You tapped into your reticular activating system. The cool thing about that, the reticular activating system, is that it is almost like the search bar in Google where you, you type in something, you say, this is what I'm looking for, and all of a sudden your brain starts to look for it. It's why you can come into a crowded room like this and everyone's talking, someone says your name, and you turn. Your brain is filtering. It's when you're thinking, uh, oh, I want to get a Tesla Model 3. And all of a sudden, you start seeing Tesla Model 3s all over the place. Isn't that weird how that works? It happens, right? That is your reticular activating system at work. 
So that's why with the rule of three, setting those three main intentions where I could wake you up in the middle of the night and say, and you say, these, uh, these are my goals, this, this, and this, what you're doing is you're extending your antennas out looking for those things, opportunities, people, connections, knowledge, that are gonna help you move toward those big three goals for the year. If you had 100, you know, diffused focus is no focus at all, right? It's important to have that clear focus, and that's where the rule of three comes in. So let's think about you for that, your big three for the year. And let, me, and let me hit on this one. Here's what Gary Keller said. He's the uh, founder of Keller Williams Realty. It's the largest real estate company in the world by agent count. Started it, bootstrapped it, and grew it to this incredible thing. Kathy used to have her, um, her real estate license under Keller Williams for a while. And she said their training system there is phenomenal. Constant improvement, personal growth, business development, sales growth. So Gary said, when everything feels urgent and important, everything seems equal. That's diffused focused. We become active and busy, but this doesn't actually move us any closer to success. Activity is often unrelated to productivity, and busyness rarely takes care of business. So again, coming back to the rule of three, and there's this combination piece of this too, is the human mind, the reason why we can effectively only manage three things or hold on to three main thoughts at a time, consistently and being alert of it is because the combination, the sequencing. When you have three items, you can get six combinations of that, ABC, BAC, CBA. When you add a fourth, it goes up to 64 variations. And when you add a fifth, it goes up to 120 variations. So like a five-digit combination lock is a lot harder to pick. So coming back to the rule of three, much easier for our, our brain to remember things and sort through it. So here's how it works. We take these big three, your big three annual goals. So I'm gonna ask you to just jot those down on your paper, wherever you want. What comes up for you first from what you saw in your future self, from the advice that you got from your future self, which is really just your tapping into your subconscious, your intuition, your imagination, the stuff without the gremlin. What are your big three main goals for 2019? And again, I would suggest it have at least one of them be a personal goal and or at least one of them be a professional or financial goal, something is to move, move you ahead that way because this is the Focus Investor event. So jot those down, whatever you wanna write. You can always change them later and modify it. And then here's the process. This is the way we stay focused and we don't feel so overwhelmed with all that life throws at us. This is a way for us to just keep on focus, on track, day by day, month by month. You've got your three big annual goals. Then what you do for the quarter, you say, okay, for this quarter, Q1 2019, and this is what we do at Real Wealth Network with our team, what am I gonna do this quarter? So for goal number one of my big three, what am I gonna do this quarter for goal number one? Where do I wanna be at the end of the quarter? And what about goal number two? Where do I wanna be at the end of the quarter? So you're very clear on your quarterly goals. Then you take those and you break them down into your monthly goal. Okay, this goal, this month, first month of the quarter, what do I wanna have at the ha on, on the 30th or the 31st of this month? What do I want to have happen? And then from there, you would do that weekly. At the beginning of the week, you say, okay, what are my big monthly goals? You got them right in front of you. What are my big three for this week? It's the old rocks in the jar story. You've probably all heard it. You can, if you try to, if you've got a big jar, you try to put sand in it and all this stuff, and you've got rocks and sand and water. If you try to put the sand in first, you're never gonna get those big rocks in first. But if you take the rocks and put them in the jar first, then you can pour the sand and it makes it around the, the rocks and all that stuff. So the cool thing about that is we can always fit this, the little stuff in, but if we don't put the big stuff in first, we're never gonna get it in there. And then daily, at the beginning of the day, you pull out your kind of game plan for the week that we'll talk about in a moment. And you might do this on a Monday morning and say, what's this week about for me? As a focused investor, as a person who's getting better, what's most important? What are the big three for this week? So you're holding yourself accountable. Having a success partner or a coach can really help on that too. So that's the process of the big three. Taking it, breaking it down, going from the long-term 20 or 10-year vision, 
pulling it all the way back to what am I going to do tomorrow? Really works well. So you're looking at what do you want to create? What really matters to you? Really look at it through that. What brings you joy and what's exci what excites you? As you're setting these goals and intentions, kind of put it through that filter right there. What's going to really bring happiness and fulfillment and move you and, and, and create better stuff? All right, so you've got your big three, I hope. You've got your why. Then there's been a bunch of research on this over the last eight years. And it's all about, it, from Stanford University, and it's all about looking at the obstacles and what that does for us. And it actually is beneficial for us. They, take, they, they took two different large test groups, and they had one test group set goals, and that was it. And then they went after their goals for the quarter. And they had the other test group set goals, and then went through the process of looking at each goal and coming up with all the obstacles they might encounter. The group that looked at the obstacles versus the group that didn't had a 78% better chance they reached their goals more effectively than the group that didn't. So you look at that, you say, say it's, I want to lose 10 pounds, something like that. If you don't look at the obstacles, and then they come up, you go to a party, and they have you know, your beer and your treats and everything, you're like, ah, oh, just have a little bit. But when you come back and you looked at it ahead of time and said, what obstacles might I encounter? Ooh, parties, social things. What am I going to do if that obstacle comes up? What's my game plan? So you start to hardwire your brain to know what it's going to do in those. So great thing to look at the obstacles, too. And now looking at your big three, look down at your paper and look at the big three that you've set for 2019. Of those goals, which one would have the biggest positive impact on all your other goals? On the other two, on your life balance wheel, if only one thing could happen in 2019, one goal you could accomplish, what would have the biggest impact across your life and across your other goals? You just maybe star it, circle it, whatever. Again, focusing, focusing. Just like the sun, you can walk outside and it's, har it's pretty much harmless as long as you don't stay out there too long. But you take that and you put it under a microscope I mean, a um, magnifying glass, and you can burn through something. I love this one. If it's important to you, you will find a way. If not, you will find an excuse. I don't need to say anything more about that. That's just truth. <laughs> uh, so now let's talk about habits, those small things that add up to make a huge difference. Charles Noble said, first we make our habits, and then our habits make us. So we're about to make some habits that are going to make us. And F.M. Alexander said, people do not decide their futures, they decide their habits. And their habits decide their futures. So let's look at that. I put rituals here. I kind of like that term um, because it is a connotation of like something positive, a positive ritual. Where sometimes habits can be taken as bad habits. But that's just me, whatever works for you. But rituals, they are these uh, actions done on a regular basis to improve your health, wealth, and or spirit. Often it affects all of those. They are like exercise. One hard workout doesn't do much for us, so got to be consistent. And you slowly change your neural structure. I love this part. I love the being from Boston. I come from more of a scientific skeptic background than California, uh, which now I've been here about 25 years. So I'm, I'm getting California eyes. But I love the science be behind the woo-woo. So this is it. Deliberate practice and what happens in our brains when we do something consistently over and over. So deliberate practice, if you just Google del deliberate practice or look it up on YouTube, you can learn a whole bunch about it. There's been a, a, a massive amount of research in university about it uh, over the past like 15 years now. What, it, what happens with deliberate practice, doing a habit consistently over and over, is we actually change our neural structure. It's called neuroplasticity. It's, they used to believe that the brain was kind of fixed. Once we got to about 20 years old, it kind of stopped, and it didn't develop and evolve. We know that's not true now. Now we know that the, the, plane, the brain is like plastic, and it comes through something called myelination. Myelin, you look at a brain, it's like this light gray color, right? But it's actually half of the brain, 50% of our brains, are made up of that, that um, dark matter. It's the cells. It's the, it's the makeup of it. But that's only half of it. The white part of our brains is myelin. Myelin is the, is the, the 
formation around the connection between neurons. So when you do something, there's a neuron here and a neuron here, and when you, you do something, it sends a signal from this neuron over this neuron. It goes doo -doo 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 -doo. And myelin wraps around that sheath and makes it a little thicker. You do it again, more myelin lays down. The more you do it over and over, you build up more of that white matter, the myelination, and it becomes a habit. It becomes easier. It's like going, cutting a, a, a path through the jungle. First time you go through there, you're chopping things down. It's really hard to get through. Second time gets it a little easier. Same thing with this. It's like going from neuron to neuron. It's almost like going from, it starts as kind of like a dial-up connection and a modem. It's like very slow. And all of a sudden, over time, you turn it into a broadband. It starts going really fast and really easy. That's why I used to hear, it's 21 days to, hear a ha uh, to create a habit. I think we've all heard that one. That was just a motivational speaker back in the 60s who came up with a ballpark and started to say, it takes 21 days to become a habit. And it became bro science, like pseudoscience. So everyone, all the other motivational speakers and writers started to write about that. It actually takes about six months to really create a habit that, that's difficult, but it can be as short as six days, but it could take longer. The harder it is, the more myelin we have to lay down, but it becomes easier. And it's like why you can jump on a bike, even if you haven't been on a bike for years, and you can still ride that bike. It's because of the myelin that you laid down. They look at kids who are, uh, Piano players, real good piano players when they started young, and kids that aren't or haven't done that, and that part of the brain that controls digital dexterity and reading is all filled up with myelin, way more developed. So it's fascinating. So that's the cool thing about habits here. So look at this. Sometimes you hear people say, well, I'm just not that disciplined. I wish I had more self-discipline. Or maybe that's your personal quality for the year is more self-discipline. That was mine last year. <coughs> Look at this. This is uh, Kelly McGonigal. Uh, she's a PhD at Stanford, researching willpower. And she said, studies have found that connecting, uh, committing to any small, consistent act of self-control, improving your posture, squeezing a hand grip to every day to exhaustion, cutting back on sweets, and keeping track of your spending can increase overall willpower. And while these small and self-control exercises may seem inconsequential, they appear to improve the willpower challenges we care about most, including focusing at work, taking good care of our health, resisting temptation, and feeling more in control of our emotions. So why? Why would that happen, doing these things? Myelination, right? So the more you have self-control and exercise self-control, the more you develop and strengthen your self-control. You become a more self-disciplined person. It's, I love that, I love that. So it's not like we're not stuck saying I'm a self not a self-disciplined person. Here's where it can pay off in things like this. That's a lot of crunches, 491,500 crunches, 38,000 push-ups, 23,000 burpees. This is what I did over the last several years, or many years now. This guy, crazy guy, Hans Floring, Friend of mine that I met years ago, he holds the record, or held the record with Alex Hunold. You've probably seen uh, free solo movies on 60 Minutes. They got the record on the nose together. It takes most parties three to four days to climb the 3,000 foot sheer granite cliff of El Capitan, the nose route. Hans and Alex did it in two hours and 23 minutes. Phenomenal. Super cool guy, and he's, a, in, he's an interesting character, I'll say, because he taught me the power of measuring. He measures everything, how fast he can clean his kitchen up, how fast he can get to work, how fast he can do anything. He starts the timer, and he's obsessed with it. But look at the results. 11 national uh, speed climbing records, X Games, gold, three years in a row. Phenomenal. Hans came up to me one day and he goes, what do you think about doing 100 crunches a day for 100 days in a row? Measure it, track it, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we did it, and it was great. At the end of the 100 days, I'm like, that was awesome. And he's like, I think so too, you wanna keep going? Absolutely, we did it for that first year. Kept going, and then a few years later, I added in push-ups. So you can see the dates on there. We started this way back in August 2005. 
So since then, Hans and I, we still check in with each other. If you miss a day of 100, you have to do 200 the next day. If you miss two days, you're doing 300. So you're like, crap, don't do it. But thank, thank you, Hans, because I would not have done 491,500 crunches without that challenge. It's the power of small little things that build up to make a big difference. Brian Tracy's wisdom, good habits are hard to develop but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to develop but hard to live with. The habits you have and the habits that have you will determine almost everything you achieve or fail to achieve. So habits, rituals, consistent things. This book, I, just, I, I read about 15 books a year, mostly on audio, uh, a little bit obsessed with uh, business and personal development. But this book just came out last year. It's really, really good science-based research on habits. He calls them atomic habits because uh, an atom is that smallest unit that can't be broken down. It's the smallest piece of energy. They actually, um, they, and it, but it has a lot of power behind it. That's why our values at Real Wealth Network somehow worked out to spell atomic. Accountability, transparency, optimism, mastery, integrity, and connection. That's where we are at Real Wealth Network. Those are our core company values that we live by. It's what we hire to, it's what we fire by, it's if we need to. So look at this, what uh, James Clear says here. This is the meaning of atomic habits, a regular practice or routine that is not only small and easy to do, but also a source of incredible power a component of the system of compound growth. It all adds up, and we know, as real estate investors, the power of compound interest, right? When you look at, over time, little bits of compound interest, what happens over time? In three years, five years, 10 years, real big things, same exact thing with our habits, with our rituals. They seem small today, but they create massive life change over the long haul. All right, so what about you? What about you? What rituals would add more health, wealth, and happiness to your life? Let's get those down. I would recommend sticking to three. It gets overwhelming. I know you can be like, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, and I've had clients come back to me over the years and they'll have 15 success habits, and they're like, this is what I'm gonna do. It's like, oh, I gotta kinda of talk them off the ledge and say, let's, let's pull it back and what, what matters most. So for you, what rituals would add to your life? I put a, a few samples right up here, give you an idea, but this is what you're gonna do on a consistent basis, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over how to track this and how to stay on focus with it. I have my coach in the room, so I, he knows what it's like that I do this, and he, I challenge myself if I don't do my habits at the right time, and I don't get my self-coaching form in on time, I have to do 100 burpees that day. So I get, it gets me to do it. <laughs> and if you know a burpee is jumping down on your stomach, jumping up in the air, clapping the air ahead of you, jumping down on your stomach, doing a push-up, they're not that fun. So here's some examples. Maybe waking up every day early, whatever it is for you. Maybe no email for the first hour of each day. And you're gonna check this off or check it off as done or not done. Um, look down there, study investing 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Real estate investing can seem overwhelming. It seems like we just need this massive glossary of, oh man, so many terms, and what, is, what does this mean, and how does this work in the beginning? But over time, studying 30 minutes a day, this was one of my intentions years ago, all of a sudden, it started to click. Now I'm learning piano, same thing, how to read music, same thing. It's like I feel like just punching my hand through my piano sometimes, but at the same time, I know I'm developing that part of my brain, and it's helping that neuroplasticity and myelination. All right, so hopefully you have some of your rituals written down. You got your rituals for the year. What are your big three, at least for Q1? What do you want to start with and see if you can develop that into a habit? Which all adds up to being an awesome day. So this is a picture of uh, Saddle Peak, hiking out with Kathy and a few friends after an amazing day of rock climbing. But that day I woke up at 4.20 in the morning my favorite time, and I got a whole bunch of work done. A whole bunch of work done. I got four hours of super focused work. We all went out, climbed, had a great day. And so that, for me, anchors that. It's like, okay, that's what an awesome day looks like. 
So this is an exercise that uh, when you get home, I'd highly recommend you do this on your own and just write up a quick one, what does an awesome day look like for me? And you can separate it. You could say, what does an awesome work day look like for me? What does an awesome play day look like for me? Or blend it all together like that awesome day I had. Again, we're tapping into the reticular activating system, we're lighting it up, and we're seeing what we want, and all of a sudden we start to find ways how to get there. All right, so we've gone through envisioning where you want to go, what's important to you. We've looked at implementing, come up with, a, I mean, I mean uh, we looked at strategizing, coming up with a strategy, how to ch chunk that down, the vision from something that's more ethereal and kind of up in our heads to actionable plans, rituals, habits, big goals. But ideas without action are useless. Thank you, Helen. So true. So all of this without action is not going to get any. If it sits on that piece of paper this year, then it sucks. You're not going to get much out of it. So we've got to put it into action. And it comes down to discipline. Now we know we can develop that discipline. We know that we can actually change our brain. Neurons that fire together wire together. That's Hebb's law. So we keep those neurons firing. Jocko Willink wrote this book, uh, Extreme Ownership. I love this. Don't count on motivation. Count on discipline. If you count on, I'm going to write my, I'm going to start writing my book when I'm, when I'm motivated. It's often not going to happen if you're hungry or tired or feeling overwhelmed. But if you say, I'm going to write in my book for the first 30 minutes of each day, no matter what, it's going to happen. That's counting on discipline. So love that one from Jocko. And back to Gary Keller. He said, the trick to success is to choose the right habit and bring just enough discipline to establish it. What's the right habit for you? Just enough discipline to, to make it happen. That's it. That's all the discipline you need. That's from a pretty successful dude. So I talked about my, um, you know, what Hans turned me on to and now what's worked so well for me and I've seen it work so well for my clients in the past is creating rituals or success habits, whatever you want to call them. You can also do it electronically. There's, there's different apps. There's today's habit tracker. This is what I do. This is the crazy thing that I would send to my coach. Each day, I'd start my day and I'd set my intentions for how many. So it's like getting up, getting up early seven times a week. So if I did it, it's like kindergarten, I get the gold star, I get to check it off. If I didn't do it, by the end of the day or whatever it was, I put an X. At the end of the week, maybe it might say something like it says down the bottom there. It might say seven over seven, it might be six over seven. If I said I want to do this three, uh, five times a week, if I only get three, it's going to say three over five. Pretty simple, straightforward. It's just a way for us to hold ourselves accountable and or to have a success partner or a friend or an accountability partner or a coach to be, to be very transparent and say, this is what's working, this is not working, not, this is what I got to. So I'd highly recommend this, some type of coaching form, a self-coaching form or a form that you send to your accountability partner or a professional coach, that's obviously the best way to work. I've worked with different coaches over the last 20 years and having someone there who knows how to ask the right questions and draw out from us and help us see perspectives that we're not seeing, that's super powerful. I don't coach anymore, but I know a lot of great coaches. So if you're looking for that, come up to me and, uh, and I can connect you. Um, but the, the self-coaching form is a really simple form, and this is, this is the gist of it, these four. It's how did my week go? You put the date at the top. This is how my week went. You do a sentence or two or three. It's a way to journal. It's a way to get your diary in. And it's a way for you can look back on your life years from now and see what was going on. And cl for clarity. You list your successes and wins. So often we're always looking to the horizon, but as Dan Sullivan for Strategic Coach says, when you look at the horizon and you start moving toward it, do you ever get there? We never do. The closer you get to the horizon, the more it keeps moving away. So a lot of times that's the way we operate as humans with our goals and our plans. We're like, oh, I'm not there yet, and we live in the gap because you're not there. So turning around, when my brother was a ski instructor at Squaw Valley, he used to have everyone in his lessons, they would ski down, and everyone's like looking down the trail for the next, for the next run. He'd say, hey, everyone, stop. Turn around. Look what you guys just came down. Look at that. Celebrate that. Think about how you did. So looking back, that's going to get that dopamine release. That's going to anchor in how we're growing and what's working. So looking at successes and wins for the week, looking at your big three from last week. So we talked about that. You got your big three for the year, the month, each week. It could be on Friday night, it could be on Sunday, it could be on Monday morning is when I do it. 
that you write down what are my big three for this week, and that's your core focus. Each morning, because you're checking off those little things, you're taking a look at that and saying, oh yeah, this is what, this is what I wanted to do. These are my main intentions for the week. So fairly simple, but really powerful. And then you're looking at your results of the big three from last week. You're setting a new big three for the coming week. My friend J.D. Asajian came out. They spoke at Real Wealth Network years ago. Uh, he was the, uh, on the first team with Than Merrill and his brother Paul Asajian on Flip This House. And he came up to me, and we're, we're chatting a little bit after. And he said, I'm really interested in being coached. So I started to coach him years and years ago. And he told me this, and th here's this quote directly from him. Getting my real estate broker's license had been a goal of mine for over 10 years. That's a, long, that's a long goal. When I started to work with Rich as my coach, we devised an action plan with an outcome in mind. We set a goal for when I would take uh, my state board exam. From there, we designed a simple monthly, weekly, and daily action plan with rituals based on my work schedule and what I needed to study. Today, I'm grateful to be a licensed California real estate broker. So that was probably six years ago that he got his broker's license. I still talk to JD once a month. In the beginning, we used to coach once a week. And then as he got his own self-coaching down, now we touch base once a, once a month. But, uh, but he's crushing it, he's crushing it with that broker's license. They're doing amazing things. They have 500 people in their company now. Phenomenal. Uh, OK, so finally, tips and tools. I just want to share these for you guys as focused investors, uh, getting things done. Really great book. Has anyone read uh, Getting Things Done? You know, about 20 people. Uh, it's excellent. Uh, some of the tools that I shared today came from that book, but it's really good about mindset. He has a very zen approach to things, like moving toward what you want without the overwhelm, uh, being really focused, and just and getting things done in a way that's not stressful. Uh, Four Hour Work Week is a great one as well. Uh, mega best selling book by Tim Ferriss. He also has a great podcast. Uh, Tim calls himself uh, the human guinea pig. So he loves to take things on, test them out on himself, and see what works and what doesn't. But the Four Hour Work Week, what I got from that more than anything is mindset shift. And I love mindset shifts because, you know, I love habits, you know, little by little, get better, get better. But a mindset shift can have exponential impact. All of a sudden, you saw things one way, and you flip it around, and you see it a different way. That can have an exponential impact on our goals and who we are and everything. So Four Hour Work Week was one of those mindset shifts for me about creating real wealth, which if you're a member of Real Wealth Network, you know it's not just about making a lot of money. You know, Some people are so poor, all they have is money. We don't want that. Real wealth is about having the money and also the freedom to live life on our own terms. That's what real wealth is. That's what this whole network is about. That's what we're about as focused investors. So I love that. It's all about lifestyle and creating what he calls a four-hour work week, which is a nice dream, but, it's, uh, but that's mindset shift. And then that's an amazing book, too, Extreme Success, my favorite. <laughs> now, now that's, oh man, 2002 that uh, was published, um, but a lot of the stuff I was sharing in, in today is, is in that book, so if you dug what you heard today, you'll dig what's in that book. And then, uh, I love this one from Leonardo, learning never exhausts the mind. Isn't that so true when you're learning something new and cool and you're into it, it's like it almost gives energy, it almost lifts us up. So here's ways to do that. And you, a lot of you are probably aware of the Real Wealth Show or Real Estate News for Investors. It's probably why most of you are in this room and heard of Real Wealth Network. Kathy's podcast, they're always in the top five on iTunes under real estate investing. Um, there's uh, top real estate markets that I did last year. We're going to be updating that to keep it current. Kathy's book, Retire Rich, is on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks, and it's all the best of the best of her knowledge about single family investing put into that book. And then the Real Wealth Investor Academy, we just had a shift a few months ago. We just turned it from a paid investor academy into a free investor academy. Yeah, super cool. So we were donating. We didn't make any money off that. As a company, we donated 100% of those proceeds, those membership dues, to charities that change the world. Uh, to date, we've donated almost $400,000 to Habitat for Humanity, Operation Smile, the Youth Opportunity Center, and Mentors International pro providing micro, uh, micro loans. 
So great work. So thank you for everyone who is a member of the Real Wealth Investor Academy for years. Our goal is still to raise over a million dollars by the year 2020. We're on track. It's going to happen. So by opening up the Real Wealth Investor Academy instead of to the uh, several hundred people that were members of it, we're opening up to everyone. Our big goal at Real Wealth Network for the last, since 20, end of 2013, we put a flag in the ground at one of those retreats and we said from this point forward, our goal is to help over 50,000 people create real wealth by the year 2020. We're at 42,000 members. We're totally on track. We're gonna help 50,000 people create real wealth. Maybe that, whether it be one little mindset shift and one little tip that helps them create more freedom in money or it might be huge, the people who've been bought 20 investment properties through us and invested in all our syndications. So there's all this range, but that's our big goal. And the way we're gonna hit that million dollars with the uh, academy, instead of the money coming from the academy, is it's going to increase the traffic to our site phenomenon. We're already seeing a huge, almost a 10 times uh, increase to our site traffic, which means more people in the network, more good people in Real Wealth Network, more people investing, and we're donating 10% of all of our proceeds through real estate investing transactions to, or through the Real Wealth Foundation to those charities. So we're gonna make it happen. I think we're gonna pass it. Stoked on that. Uh, and then these are a few more apps and tools that can really help, that have helped uh, Kathy and me really well with our portfolio, with real estate investing for staying on track and several clients and members who've come up to me over the years who have done this workshop have come up and said, hey, that one thing you shared, I'm still using it today. Uh, I'll explain it quickly. Wonderlist is, um, I used to separate my personal stuff into Wonderlist. It's just a to-do tracker that works across all those different platforms, really easy so you can see your to-do list here. Gets it out of your head, as D David Allen says, in getting things done. We gotta get the stuff out of our heads and into a holding system that we trust. You have to trust it. You know that, you, that it's not going to go away. So Wonderlist is great for that. Recently, I've moved everything into Basecamp, which we've used at Real Wealth Network to, to run a remote virtual company. For years, we were in Walnut Creek, and we had an office with seven offices, and everyone was there. And little by little, people started to move away, like Ben moving to Florida, and Maggie traveling the world, and uh, had hired some people up in Utah. And so now we're on 100% remote company and we run our whole company on Basecamp uh, for all our projects. It tracks your to-dos, to-do lists. You can upload files and docs really easy. You can email to it, uh, works really well. So it's so good that I've moved all my personal to-dos into my own little project on there uh, to, to track things that way. So Basecamp is awesome. Um, Evernote, you've probably used that. Uh, just great for tracking all your documents and keeping things organized so you don't go into overwhelm. Uh, Lynda.com. Fantastic for learning. Say you're, you want to learn more about Microsoft Excel or numbers for Mac, and it's like you're building out spreadsheets for your portfolio, and like, how to do that? You go on lynda.com, and there's a step-by-step -step video course that will take you through every little step. And they have thousands of different courses on thousands of different topics. Uh, and finally, that little thing that says 25, that is a Pomodoro timer. So you might remember when you were younger, maybe your mom or your grandmother had a little, looked like a little plastic tomato, and you turn it, it goes tick, 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 tick. That's a Pomodoro timer. Someone has taken that and created it and made it digital that goes on your computer, and it is a countdown timer. So my goal is to do four Pomodoros a day on whatever it might be. I might say, I'm gonna put four Pomodoros on preparing for the Focused Investor Talk. And I hit start and it starts doing the countdown, tick, tick, tick. And we can really effectively focus for about a half hour, 25 minutes, really be focused without interruptions. So that's what it does. You have a commitment, you close your email, you close Facebook, you close Instagram, and you say, okay, for the next 25 minutes, I'm going, and you click, click. It starts going, you're super focused, you're effective, and then it goes boom, and it says, take a break. And then it counts down five minutes. You get five minutes to take a break, you can go, <laughs> and check your social media, you know? <laughs> get your fix, and then you come back and it says, boom, get back to work. So you can set it for whatever's good for you. You can say three Pomodoros, two Pomodoros, but really phenomenal. I know Ben's been using it, a bunch of people at our company have been using it, so Pomodoro timer is very effective. And then finally, um, optimize.me. You might want to write that one down, optimize.me. Brian Johnson started with something called Philosopher's Notes, where he's taken 
several hundred of the best personal development books, business development books, spiritual books from years, you know, from you know, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, and he's, he boils them down into like kind of a cribs notes for personal development. So he does a, like a six page PDF and a 20 minute audio of the, he, what he calls the big ideas, the best of the best. And it's really cool because you can be driving along in your car and get all this education. You can absorb a full book of all the big ideas in 20 minutes. And then you can decide, OK, I got what I needed from that. Or that's so good, I'm going to go out and buy the book and d dive in deep. It's led me to a lot of the books that I've shared from today. So optimize.me, it's only like 10 bucks a month, super affordable. He has like a lifetime membership for, I think, $249 but it's worth every penny. And he also is now doing uh, additional courses on like how to have your best year ever, things like that. So that's a great one. All right, all right. So we've gone through the process of envisioning, looking at where you want to go, the strategize uh, how to get there, creating a plan. It's up to you now to implement and put it into action. And at the end of this year, I, would, I mean, at the end of each week, I want you to observe, observe your results. At the e end of each month, end of each quarter, but at the end of 2019, we'll be doing another Focused Investor, part one, it's called, where we'll be wrapping up your year and looking at how did this year go with all these tools. So now, today, you've got wisdom from your future self, and that future self can be your guide, your mentor, if you're ever nervous about something, a sales presentation, asking someone out, whatever it might be, tap in, become your future self, act as if. When we act as if, it literally changes how we think on a, a physical level when you act as if. And oh, I just read something about this yesterday. They took a group of 70 to 80 year old people through, through different nursing homes and they divided it into two different groups. One group thought about what it was like when they were young. They put on music from when they were young. They had them, they asked them questions about what it was like and tell me about what it was like when you were young. And the other group, they didn't, they, but they tested both groups on flexibility, strength, and intelligence, and compre comprehension and memory. At the end of the study, this group, I can't remember the percentage now, but it was a, a huge difference as this group got younger. The group that thought about and acted as if they were young, it improved their flexibility, it inf improved their grip strength, really neat. So we can do the same with acting as if we are our future self, the, good, the best parts of our future self the wise part, the fit part, whatever it might be. So it actually changes physically what happens with us. So you have a vision for your future self in this year. You have a measurement of where you are today, your life balance wheel. You have a theme for your year to keep you focused, that one thing, the flag in the ground. Uh, you have your personal quality to develop. You have three important goals for the year, your big three. And you have positive, helpful rituals and more self-discipline just by being here. So the better way is just ahead. Thank you.